Hey, it's your open source advocate, and every week I bring you new open source, self-hosted software that is absolutely amazing. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this channel so they can come along on the journey with us. Now let's get started. I want to talk uh, a little bit about the software that I'm using for this project. So there's there's a few things. Uh, first thing is Motion iOS. So this is actually something that you download and you download the image and you put that onto an SD card and that's what you plug into the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Um, so, so this is where you would get it from GitHub and I'll have the link in the description. Now there are tons of videos out there on Motion iOS. This is a really popular one because it's super simple to set up and it just works with the Raspberry Pi and all of the cameras that you can use with it um, as far as I know. So um, that's this one, this one's super simple, and if you don't like my video, there's lots of others. Finally, Angry IP Scanner. I've talked about this in other videos, but this is a super great, super useful piece of software. Um, I highly recommend getting it and installing it because it just makes things so easy uh, to, to do. Whether it's Windows, whether you're running it on Linux, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you're trying to find IP addresses on your network that you just don't know what they are, and in this case, like with a Raspberry Pi Zero W, you may not know what it is. So we'll kind of talk about how you get that set up and then how you find the IP address. Um, and then finally, I've got samples of what's going on with Motion iOS. So this is the camera that I just took apart and put back together for you. Um, so you can kind of see what's happening here and you can see the motion that's going on just barely outside the window. There's not a lot of wind today, so it's hard to tell that it's not a static image. Uh, but if we, if we zoom it up a little bit, um, you can kind of see the, the leaves moving on the trees here now. I'm using this with Motion iOS, but I'm also streaming this to Shinobi, so it looks a little more broken up than normal. Um, if you just use, use Motion iOS on its own, you get a very smooth stream, and, and it's really nice. So I'm going to make this back down to normal size there. Uh, within Motion iOS, you've got lots of settings. So we're about to go through the settings here and talk about how I got things working. And really, again, a lot of information from other people that helped me get this going. I am not a person who just figured this out on his own. I've been working on this, in fact, for quite a while, and the last little piece came together for me recently, so that was great. Here's the other camera that I was showing you there in my office, and it's pointing over at my uh, door, my other door, my bookshelf, and you can see I need to put some new uh, foam insulation there because that door has quite a light crack coming through. Uh, but you can, you can see kind of what's going on in the office. There's not a lot of motion, unfortunately, to really see there. Um, if we zoomed in right here on the windows, you might see the wind blowing in the trees, but uh, there's my second camera. So I, I plan to mount both of these outside and, and get them set up to run that way. So Angry IP Scanner, I've shown this in the past, but what you do is set it up so that you're scanning for certain IP addresses or scanning all the IP addresses on your network, actually, if you want to. So you can set the range up here. Um, and then inside the settings, you can tell it, I want to look for things on certain ports. So you open up the settings and you can come here and tell it what ports. So I'm looking for ports 80, 443, 80, 80, and 22. Once you set that, you can just click on the start button. And you can see it starts scanning and it starts running down. And down here you can see, you know, how many threads it's running at once. So as it goes, it's going to try to finish up here pretty quickly. It does as much as it can, as quick as it can. When you see those threads start going down, it'll get down to one and it'll finally finish and it'll give you a little message when it's done. Just clear that message and then you can click up here on the header row until it's sort by ports. So when we do this, we can see we have motion eye right here and that's 20, uh, 22 and 80 and that's 202. Now I happen to know I have another um, server that also runs motion eye OS and it's 227. Now it comes up as NA, I just happen to know this, but I've been messing with the name on it, so that's why it's not showing up correctly. So here you can see what's going on, and I've got it where we can see out the doors. So there's a few things you can set up. So first of all, MotionEye OS in and of itself can also look at other MotionEye OS cameras. So you have this ability to say, I want to set up the grid to have however many rows, however many columns. So that's what you're doing up here in this section. So if you want multiple cameras, you would say, I also want this one to look at camera from the other one that I've got set up, and I could have both showing up here. Since these are Raspberry Pi Zeros, I don't want them both trying to do a bunch of video processing, so I'm, I'm not doing that in this case. But if you had a Raspberry Pi 4 that you set up with a camera and then a bunch of Raspberry Pi Zeros, you could definitely use that, that Pi 4 to pull in the feeds from the other cameras. 
So as you go down through here, you'll see these different settings. Now, when you first log in, it's the login is admin and the the password is empty. You want to change that. You want to set a password that's strong. Now, it doesn't show it always shows like five little dots here. You can set this thing to 15, 18, 20 characters and it still shows five little dots. But you also want to set up a user. So in this case, I've set I've changed the user from user to be my my username and then a password for that as well. So the user has fewer uh, per privileges, which is generally what you want unless you're logging in to make changes to the to the system. So time zone I set to my time zone and then I just gave this a host name so pi uh, so you can see here pi 0w camera 1. As you move down so you can actually go out and tell it to check for updates. I'm not going to do that. I know this is pretty up to date software right now. But you can also shut it down. You can reboot it. And then you can mess with configuration so you can back up and restore your configuration. So if you make a configuration, you can back it up. And then if you need to restore it for some reason, you've got that capability. You reinstall Motion iOS brand new, grab that configuration, and restore it. You don't have to go through and set up all these configs manually. When you look at the network side, you've got the ability here to set up your Wi Fi network. So if you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 2 or a Raspberry Pi 1 or a Raspberry Pi 4, this is fine because you can connect with an Ethernet cable to your network and then go in and set up your Wi-Fi network from here. With the Raspberry Pi 0W, we have to do that WPA supplicate file because you don't have an Ethernet cable to ever get to this point. You need the Ethernet cable to get to the web server in order to actually see this information. So, in this case, we have to do the WPA supplicant.conf file to set up the wireless and then it's just reflecting what we already set up. So on services, I don't really mess with this. I've left this all alone. I haven't really messed with FTP or Samba server or anything, but these are here. You can turn them on and off and set them up the way that you want them if you want to use something on here for, for any kind of services. And then expert settings. So this is an important one. This is what was getting me the whole time. So when I first set this up, it's the same camera, same Raspberry Pi Zero. And if I click on here and I tell it, you know, go full screen again, you can still see the trees are moving. There's quite a bit of motion going on. I mean, it's not spectacular, but you can see that, that things are happening out there because I just, you know, nobody walking around, of course, in my yard, which is great. That's what I want. When you're looking at the expert settings, it's really important for you to know that there is a setting that makes this happen. When I first set this up, I didn't have this. I had like two frames per second, and even that was kind of choppy and not, not always the greatest. Um, and that was extremely low resolution. So this here is 720p. I could probably take this to 1080p, you know, 1920 by 1080, but not that much of a difference, and I'm getting decent, uh, you know, performance here. So the thing that I didn't realize, and I found this out from a whole completely different person and set up in video, was that there's this little thing here that is off for whatever reason by default, but this is called Fast Network Camera. You should come in here and turn this on if you want to have decent frame rates on a Raspberry Pi Zero. So you set this to on, apply the settings, reboot, and all of a sudden you've got really great frame rates. You can change up the resolution. You can change a whole lot of things about the Raspberry Pi Zero W setup that you've got going once you turn that on. And this changes. So when you turn that on, you get a whole bunch more um, capabilities. This is very minimal until you turn that on. But then you can get in here and actually set some of these things like brightness, contrast. I really just left them alone. I messed with them a little bit and they, they just made it worse. So I just leave them where they're at. But here you can see I've got it set to 720p. Um, we can change it to uh, 1920 by 1080. You know, we can try it and see what happens. I don't know how it's going to look, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. So we'll apply. When you make that change, you have to click on apply. It's going to try to make that change here in the background. And you can see there's a lot more brightness coming through. Um, so it did kind of make some adjustments there. We can click on this. Let's just see what our frame rates are looking like because I didn't change the frame rate. It is a bit more clear. You can definitely see more detail in my plants out there in the garden. You can still see motion, but it's definitely not as much as it was. Um, so if I'm willing to put up with this though, it's not bad. So I'm getting a, a much better resolution now than I was before. And all I had to do was make that little change. So I'm going to go back down here to expert settings, um, right below expert settings. And I'm going to change this back for now. Um, so 1280 by 720, wherever that went. There we go. And we'll hit apply again. It's going to change that back. 
I think the zoom of the camera changes a little bit. Yeah, it does. See, like these were closer zoomed in. It's kind of weird. But um, anyway, so now you can see there's not as much light coming in, things like that. But you'll, you'll see that there's going to be more motion out here, and, and it's going to just look, you know, a little bit smoother. Um, definitely fuzzier just because, again, we're not doing as high resolution, but getting a little bit more motion. So anyways, I like this setting. It's fine with me. So we'll go back down here to expert settings and right below that to the video device. So down here you can change the camera name if you want to. You can change it from, uh, I don't think you can change it from simple MPEG, MJPEG camera because that's what it is. It's just detecting that. But if you hang your camera and it's upside down, you can actually change the angle. So we could flip this over. I don't think we have to reboot for this, but now the door should show up upside down here when it's done. And yes, it's upside down. So you can actually change this by, by 90 degree increments if you need to. So if you hang the camera and it has to hang upside down for some reason, you can flip over the image and everything comes out just fine. Um, so as we move down, um, so you can say flip vertically. So if you actually want to flip the image for some reason, you can do that as well. Like for some reason it's looking mirrored, you can flip it so it's not that way. Uh, here's where you set the frame rate. Oh, I guess I have this set to 15. I don't even have it set to 20. I think I can set it to 20. Um, let's try this. We'll do apply. We'll see if it makes any difference. I don't think it's going to. Because it was already looking a little bit kind of odd when we did that. We'll zoom back in here. I mean, it's okay. Doesn't look much different to me. Maybe you guys can see it. You discerning people, perhaps you can see a change of 5 frames per second. So. We'll leave that alone, all right? Image quality, so you can also adjust these things. And then this is kind of set. I didn't really mess with the bit rate, uh, the zoom X, zoom Y, uh, zoom width and zoom height. I didn't really mess with either. And then HDMI preview is off. I, so I really left all the rest of this pretty much alone. I didn't mess with it. So we can minimize this one. And then we can go down here to video streaming. So this is this is another part. So you want to know what your streaming URL is. So that's going to be your IP address and then the port that the streaming is running on. So that's 8081. That's just important for setting up things like Shinobi or telling another Raspberry Pi that they want to see this stream. You need to know that port number. Now you can change the streaming protocol, but it kind of messes with the video, at least on these cameras, when I change it to RTSP. So I haven't done that. But you do have that option in Motion iOS. So if you have an RTSP system and you want to use that, you can. You just want to make sure you get cameras that work well with the RTSP um, protocol. This one works well with MJPEG, so I've just left it alone. And then you can set up uh, authentication mode, basic or disabled. I've just left it disabled, but you can set it up to basic authentication as well. You already get authentication when you log into the system up here. Um, and you have to put in that authentication to stream um, from Motion Eye to Motion Eye. It's only a change, uh, it's only something that you could turn on if you want to do it. Uh, when you're doing something like Shinobi, you could turn this on so that Shinobi also has to authenticate. So that's a really quick overview of MotionEye OS, um, just the settings. And really, I want to show you one more thing, so I'm going to log out. Then I'm going to log back in as my other user here. And I just want you to see the difference in the interface. So as you log in, very, very little control. You can change how many frame, you know, how many rows and, and, and columns you have, and that's really it. There's nothing else. So when you're logged in as a non-administrative user, you don't have all of those other settings. So that's Motion Eye OS. Okay, real quick, I want to go over the process for getting Motion Eye OS onto your SD card so that you can actually get the SD card um, to load up with your Raspberry Pi, whatever version you decide to use. So first I'm going to put in the SD card. And down here you'll see, at least on my system, they show up as a couple of volumes. So the boot volume is the important one here. Um, I'm going to reburn this though so you can see what's going on. So I entered, my, so I insert my SD card. And I'm going to open some software here called Belena Etcher. There it is. All right. So we've got Etcher. So when you open up Etcher, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to click on this little button here. You'll go to wherever you downloaded your Motion iOS image to, and you'll see here it's got the XZ. So you're just going to click on that. And you click on Open or Select, depending on your system. It's going to jump here. Now you want to open this and make sure you pick the right drive. 
So in my case, I want the 32 gigabyte SD card. Make sure it's, it's not one of your backup drives or something, that would be bad. And then you're gonna go to continue. And you're just gonna click on the button that says flash. Now on Linux and on Mac, this is going to prompt you for your super user password. So make sure you know that and type it in. And then hit authorize and it's gonna start the flash process and it's pretty quick. Motion Eye OS is a pretty small um, image. So it doesn't take very long for it to burn. We'll let it go ahead and uh, burn, and then Etcher will also check it to make sure that it was a good uh, burn to the SD card, and then it'll tell you it's done. All right, that took about 60 seconds. It didn't take very long, honestly. So once that's complete, you can close Etcher. Now you notice my, file, my, my drive is not mounted anymore. I don't have the little eject symbol. So I'm just going to pop it out and then I will pop it right back in and it's going to come back up and I want this smaller sized volume and this is kind of what you should see now it may be stacked in a different way but these are the type of files you should see. Alright so once you've got that set up you need to create a couple of files in this location. So the first one I'm just going to do a new document and I'm just going to make it a text document and I'm going to go in here and rename it. And I'm going to get rid of everything, including the extension. And then I'm just going to name it SSH. That is all I need. That file right there named SSH. Now, the second thing we need is I have this file already created. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into that boot volume. And it's called WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. So I'm going to change the view here. And that way you can actually see what it looks like. It's WPA underscore supplicant dot C-O-N-F. And once we open this up, you can see that there's a little bit of information here that we need to actually set up. So first, the country. My country is U.S. But if you're not in the U.S., you want to put your country's two-character country code right here. So make sure to fix that. Second is you want to put the SSID, so the network name of your wireless network. You want to put that in here in between the quotes. Leave the quotes. Just... Just highlight this part in between the quotes and get rid of it and then type in your network name. Make sure that you spell it correctly. Make sure you capitalize correctly. Make sure if you used underscores, you keep the underscores. If you used hyphens, keep the hyphens, that kind of stuff. Same thing for the password section here. You want to take your network password for your network and get rid of the stuff in between the quotes and then put in your network password here. And then leave this. If I'm, I'm presuming you're using WPA2 um, encryption at, at the very least. You should be if you're not, so please make sure you have that set up. But that is what this part means, so don't mess with this. But put in your SSID and your network password. Save this file. Make sure it's in that boot folder, and you'll be set. Once you've done that, you can eject that card, and you can just eject these volumes. Pop it out of your machine and you're set. The SD card is ready to go into your Raspberry Pi Zero. You can boot the Pi Zero and it should find your network assuming you typed everything correctly and you're close enough for it to find your wireless network. If you enjoyed this please like, subscribe, tell your friends so they can come along with on the journey with us and I want to say a special thank you to all of the patrons who are out there on patreon.com and starting to support me. I really appreciate that. I'm gonna put their names up here on the screen right now. Um, you just don't understand how much I appreciate this. It means so much that you appreciate what I'm doing enough to, to let me know that through Patreon. So thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.